this is Cutting Down the Nets. We are in Las Vegas, and I have a guest picker with me today. I grabbed this guy at random from one of the sports books. Nope, that's actually my brother, and this is his 20th year coming down for March Madness. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll go through the Saturday slate of eight games and kind of show you what Ken Palm thinks, Bart Torvik thinks, Shaq Quality, ultimately Patty, which is the, the most important. Well, and then what I some Skip Bayless jag on <laughs> that's going to offer his, his – he's ready to debate. So uh, we'll get right to it. There's only eight games. won't take too long. So for the tournament, counting the Loyola – didn't make a layup for 40 straight minutes. We we're now 9-7. and seven. Yesterday was 9-6. and six. But Jack State uh, on the ropes and likely uh, L as well. So we'll see if we can get some back today. That's but final. this purpose is to get into Saturday's games. So I will start. I had him write his uh, bets down. The first game is St. Mary's. And UCLA. UCLA is favored by three in this game. I'd like your take first. Uh, I pick St. Mary's. Okay. I don't personally like the offensive uh, philosophy of UCLA. Mm -hmm. A lot of jumpers. And uh, I think St. Mary's is just going to get it done with them. It's going to be a good night for Johnny Juzang. And uh, (laughs) who was the other one? Tiger Campbell, who can't shoot, it's going to be lights out. So, um, our guest picker is taking St. Mary's. Patty has St. Mary's favored in this game by uh, two and a half. And Torvik Kenpom uh, favored the UCLA side, but not quite all the way up to three. So, St. Mary's will be a play for us, and we won't have any argument. Sometimes we have to, like, get mad at the data because it's suggesting something we don't want to do. But in this case, uh, it works out. Next game is Memphis Gonzaga. Gonzaga is favored by ten points in this matchup. Guest picker. Um, this guy decided he was going to take the Zags, pretty much because it's kind of a chalk play. But uh, I just don't think if you, I think if you get up on Memphis, I think it's going to cause some problems for him. That's that's my take on that. It's so. it's fair, man. So Patty has Gonzaga by three. Ken Palm's twelve. Torvik nine point six. So a ten point line isn't surprising, and I, teams that have competed against Gonzaga this year value their possessions more than life itself. And uh, Memphis not one of those teams, but Gonzaga doesn't turn you over. So um, we have a path there. But I think I think you're right. This might be a live betting opportunity. I'm going to play Memphis plus ten. But I think we'll know based on the flow of the game, like how this one's gonna end up. Yeah. But if you get some energy and some swagger going, and you know you got that bully ball in the paint against Chet and Timmy, like you can really throw them off their game too. So yeah, I think you'll learn a lot in the first five six minutes of this game. <laughs> North Carolina Baylor Baylor's favored by five and a half. Me personally, I don't think I've ever won a Baylor bet in my life, and I've probably made forty of them. So we'll see how this goes on Saturday. Who you like, North Carolina or Baylor? Well, I also never won a Baylor bet, so <laughs> um, you know, between Dan Reshlov and Baylor. Either way, Baylor. Here's the deal: I'm taking North Carolina. I'm not a North Carolina guy. I don't think North Carolina is that good. But I just never won a Baylor bet, so I'm probably going to win this one either. So I'm taking North Carolina. Plus. Can the Baylor streak continue? Uh, Patty has Baylor by two and a half here. So with a five and a half point spread would be saying to take North Carolina. The bull case for North Carolina is their freaks on the boards, which you have to be against Baylor. And then North Carolina does not turn the ball over. So look, we'll kind of see how that goes. But um, North Carolina had a perfect matchup for themselves in the first round. This is not a perfect matchup, but it is a matchup that can neutralize some of Baylor's strengths, which is important. Next game up, Michigan and Tennessee. Guest picker, who you got? Well, my history is obviously making a living off betting against Rick Barnes, and I'm sure it's been referenced here a million times. So for that reason, I'm taking Michigan. I think it's an easy decision. It once was rule number one. No matter what anything else said, if Rick Barnes is the coach of the team, you are betting against that team. Um, Patty has Tennessee, who's been elite 
this year, and certainly the back half of the year, it's nine point two point favorites. So Patty's going to like the Tennessee side. It's it's really uncomfortable for us. We hedged yesterday with a Tennessee first half where it wasn't like we're betting on Rick, <laughs> and then we got out with it. But they did keep the throttle down and and crushed them. But uh, yeah, there's uh, certainly <laughs> some angles there that we have to sort out internally. Uh, New Mexico State at Arkansas. Um, New Mexico State opened against UConn as a seven-point dog, and now we have the exact same matchup, seven-point dog. Who do you like, New Mexico or Arkansas? Well, first of all, I think that Connecticut's completely trash, so I think that that win is not Ooh. that meaningful. Hot take. So that's my hot take. So <laughs> I'm taking Arkansas plus the points because I just think Arkansas is just way more athletic and they're going to get it done. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Patty doesn't agree again. <laughs> um, Patty has Arkansas by 3.2. Um, New Mexico State ran pretty hot yesterday to get it done, but they, they looked in control, open to close. Arkansas almost let Vermont get away with it, not because of anything Vermont was doing, but Arkansas's own self-inflicted wounds. My brother's on the must bus. I like must, but um, imagine fading Patty. Can't do it. Uh, Richmond, who ripped our hearts out of our soul and put us into the rare Thursday nap. Like It's like there's just no way as Iowa fans to recover from losing money and getting upset with probably your best team. Too oh, it's just frustrating. So we have Richmond and Providence. Who do you like? Team that stole. I like. Soul. I like nothing. These teams are just <laughs> garbage. This is going to be like two pigs under a blanket. This is awful. I have no interest in this game. I'm already mad because Iowa should be rolling this game, and these two clowns are just going to literally just put lids on the rim and just be a bunch of just pigs. This is going to be a pig game. Uh, it's um, it's it's the fraud bowl. If you ask me, I don't know. I mean, man, Iowa ran cold. Yesterday, but no excuses. So Patty has this close to a pick'em. Uh, Providence a slight favorite. Um, so how will I get out alive with this? I, I truly, truly don't know what I will do with this game, but the data certainly suggests back in Richmond at the full possession. Uh, two games left. We have Creighton and Kansas. Kansas laying 11 and a half against Greg McDermott's boys. Who you like? Tell you what, after watching that Texas-Kansas uh, game, that thing was the grossest game I've ever seen in my life. So, um, I'm, you know what, I got I got Dougie McBucket's uh, dad and Creighton to uh, actually win this game. I think Ooh. Kansas goes down and goes down hard. They're just not that good. That's a hot take. Um, if Kansas gets through this game, I think the cakewalk is complete in that region. So, Patty says, yeah, Kansas is likely to win this game, but only by about nine points. Shot quality says eight. Torvik says 10. Ken Palm says nine. So kind of a consensus there under the big number of 11 and a half. Um, I think Creighton is going to turn the ball over, and they've turned the ball over every game, and they can still get enough um, to get it done. So uh, Data likes Creighton there. The final game is... St. Mary's versus no. St. Peter. No. Or St. Peter's versus Murray State. You're up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, who you got? The line is eight and a half points. I, that's insane. I think that's a lot of points. And, and uh, this game was more like a three, which I probably think it should be. I'd, I'd probably take St. Oh, I'm sorry, Murray State. But uh, St. Peter will win this game. And uh, it's unfortunate, or I'm not saying they'll win it, but they'll cover this game. And uh, Murray State's one of the toughest teams in, in the uh, in the pool, I think. Look, I don't I don't want to fade Murray State. They're fun. They're good. Um, all that sort of stuff. Bet numbers, not teams. And the spread here, I think, is just a little too high. Patty says close to a pick 'em, but I'm not surprised since Patty had St. Peter's within six against Kentucky. And with a straight face, I had to say, yes, my model likes St. Peter's to come within six against Kentucky. I realize the point spread is 18, but, like, I think it's six. And then for them to win outright was certainly good for the hashtag brand 
And uh, we'll bring you a recap here of what Patty likes and then some NIT splashes for you as well. This is an extremely dog heavy card with the lowest amount of variance with Creighton and North Carolina, just to point out. So, um, sometimes favorites go like six and two on Saturday and then two and six on Sunday. And I don't really track any of that stuff, but, um, it's certainly possible that all dogs cover certainly possible. All favorites cover. That's what's fun about this time of year. Some NIT splashes, Texas A&M lane five against Oregon. Patty has that closer to, uh, double digits, Portland minus nine. Uh, Patty has Portland by 15 in this spot against New Orleans. And you and I getting six at BYU, even though it's a road game, Patty has that close to a pick em. So this is cutting down the nets. Let's turn this uh, early rough start on a Saturday. It's uh, Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Around. Good luck out there on Saturday.